In this lesson, we want to talk about backgrounds. Uh, here's a, a painting I just finished up. <clears throat> lesson 17 is about how to paint the hair and how to paint the skin. And now we have the background. Uh, we could paint, we could leave the painting as it is. It wouldn't be too bad. Um, when we do a background, one of the things, I have a piece of glass on top of the painting. Here's smaller L mats. And we need these really to figure out, so they're two L's like that, and we need, we turn them like this, and we start trying to figure out how do we want to end this painting. We could, of course, go in like that. We could even go in here like this. We could go down here like this. There's, there's many ways to compose this painting, and many of them might work pretty good. So that's the first thing we want to do is start thinking about how do we want to end this painting. We could end it out like this. And this is very important. Uh, this is a huge, uh, uh, hugely important way to figure out composition and design on your portraits and all your paintings. Uh, and even with the photograph, here's the photograph I used. And even with the photograph, we can start already playing with L mats and thinking about how we would like to compose that. Uh, so let's, uh, I want to show you a technique using glass and also plastic to put over the painting to figure out how to end the painting. Uh, because we want to try as many different ways as we can think of. So I'll go back to putting this piece of glass over the painting. You can see the glass here. I'm going to put just a regular piece of glass and now we're going to take some paint and my palette's over here. It's kind of messed up but you can see my palette. And let's start playing around with some imaginary, this has to be imagination. So we're going to take some dark gooey paint. To paint on glass, it cannot be very, it can't be very wet. It has to be nearly like oil. My paint is like gooey, just like oil paint. So if this is watery, we can't paint on glass. But on a piece of glass like this, I can come in here like this and I can paint something in the background and start imagining, try different colors and start playing around with the idea what would happen if we darken that up. We don't like that color, then let's try a different color. We'll go to some blue here and put blue over that like that. So we can come over here like that and let's get a little bit bluer yet because we have a lot of blue uh, we have a lot of blue down here. So if we come in here like this we can get some ideas here on what what would happen to our painting then if we if we did that there. You can kind of see that. Uh, let's get a little bit darker yet. Um, and so we're going to try some ideas here because I have to decide how to end this painting. And it's very important. We're going to come in here and get darker here like this. And because this angles this way here, I'm kind of tempted to repeat that angle somewhere. But we're going to come in here like that. And, uh, and I could take some of this purple. There is some purple over here so we can bring the purple up here a little bit we could even come down and uh, come down and through here and darken this up through here so now we're we're coming up with some ideas on what would happen if we if we darkened up that painting you know like that and then I can start uh, playing around with L mats and see how I like that again look at that there and then look what we have here I haven't hurt the painting and yet I have a way of visualizing how that is going to look uh, if I do that. So that's one way. Now there's something uh, else we have here. This is a piece of plastic here and it's called, I believe it's called wet media. Depending on the country you live in, uh, it's different. But this is a special kind of, it's not just regular piece of of uh, acetate it is uh, you can paint on it in America it's called wet media and let's take the photograph here and I, you can also try backgrounds and different photographs and on this here I'm gonna I painted I put that over the the photograph and I put this on here like that now that's a dramatic change from what we had and now I'm gonna come in here and play around with the idea of of doing something like this here. And this is the direction I'm kind of leaning in. 
in terms of ending that painting. You look at that potential painting there, if we cover that up there, that painting there, if I do that kind of a dark background to this painting here, <clears throat> you know, that would ha that will have a huge impact on on changing this painting. I wouldn't change anything in here, but that I'd put in a dark background through here, and I kind of kind of leaning in that direction. So, okay, I'm working. I'm putting in the dark background on this. Uh, so the way I do that, I'm going around uh, the edge of the uh, hair like this. And then I, I pull the wash out, it's still wet there. And I want to show you a little bit how I do this. Uh, we come over here like this, uh, you take nice dark paint, and uh, I'm just making this up. So I just want it to be nice and dark. Just use all your dark colors, your, your greens, purples, whatever. Now we come in here like this, and now I'm going to come in very slowly, and I paint around these hairs. It's like this here. And then watch what I do as I come out. I go around, I'm darkening all this up. And we come out. Now I'm going to eventually make the whole background dark here. Getting a little reflection there. That music going in the background. This goes in darker here like this. And I pull around. I'm painting around all these little hairs. Clean the brush out. Clean the brush out, dry it off like that. Now uh, now we go back, the brush is cleaned out, and with the brush cleaned out, we agitate the edge of this. Same amount of water in the brush, it's not any wetter, and we're just softening up that edge. That's what I've been doing all along here. I'm doing what I'm doing right here. We come out, we're going to soften this up again, and we soften it until that edge disappears. And we create a little more gradual transition, because I'm going to be painting the whole background darken a little bit. So this, I want this to gradually, gradually uh, lighten up as it goes out. So we fade this out like this, and soften all those edges up so we don't have a, we don't want a hard edge when we come to the ending. See, this is what we call a soft edge here. But a hard edge would be if we stopped like this here, Okay, and that's our edge, and that dries, that's an edge right there. That dries, we can't get rid of that. So we gotta get rid of that edge, we're gonna clean that off, we soften that color up, and keep lifting, we're lifting the paint out here, and we soften it up so there's no sharp edge there. Uh, that way I can come along, soften this up here, I can come along now, eventually gonna come along with possibly a brush this big, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to paint around the background here real quick and loose. And by having done all this around with a small brush, I can come in with a big brush and do a nice fresh wash. Okay? Okay, here it's reflecting, but I'm, pour, I'm painting on with this big brush, this big, nice, gooey, soft paint here. Um, nice and gooey. This is not hard paint. It's fresh out of the tube. And we're going to come in here like this and just come down very boldly like this here. It's just like a house brush. And that's that's what I'm doing. I just thought I'd show you a little bit of what I'm, I'm doing there. But I've got to stop now. Okay, I've got the background uh, filled in, <clears throat> but there's still some little things to do. If we look along the edge of the hair here, right along here, this edge needs to be worked on. It's a little sloppy. If we look at the uh, photograph here, here's the photograph. But how that hair, and see the glow on the back of her head? It's hard to see it because the background isn't black. But here you see what I've done. And that edge is very, very important. So the, the light is coming from the back of her head. See how it's glowing on the back side of her head? So that's what we need to get here, and it has to be done right. So that's what I'm working on right now. And I, I come over here and I take some white paint, nice gooey white paint. That's just like oil paint. There's no water in it, very little water. And now we come over here and we look for a highlight. For instance, uh, right here, 
right here is a highlight here which is right here so I'm gonna take that white paint and I'm gonna put it right in here very thick just like oil paint and I put that in like that and then I'm gonna fade it out rinse this out with water get rid of all that white paint get my brush cleaned out and dry no paint in it now I'm gonna come in here and very softly I'm gonna get rid of that texture there we want it to be soft so I soften that up and I and I pull that in okay here is my uh, finished painting I think it's finished and you can see how I painted the background all the way down here like this and I painted clear off the paper like that so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the the L mats I've talked about that we have these two L mats here and see them like that and then we're gonna try to find our composition so I'm gonna spend I can spend quite a bit of time trying to figure out exactly how I want to frame this so we can come down we can come down like this we can come all the way down again we can go left we can come here like this we can you know there's a lot of different things we can do so I'm gonna spend quite a bit of time trying to get this place exactly right a quarter inch too high or too low or too far to the right or too far to the left and it can have a huge positive or negative impact on the painting so uh, that's uh, that's pretty much it for this painting and about backgrounds and cropping a painting